So for our next project, let's take a look at the idea of a cube and putting it in product design. So we've gone retro with this and we're going to sketch out a Nintendo GameCube. For this project, we're simply going to use a handful of pencils. I've got a B, an HB, and a 3B. We're going to use a nylon eraser and a kneaded eraser. And for this project, we are going to throw in a vine charcoal stick. Let's get started. So before I start drawing, or while I'm drawing, I always take a mental note or a mental image on what sides are higher or wider or deeper, and just get an overall understanding of the object. So we'll start by drawing with a HB pencil and just simply sketching this out. Now essentially we have this side plane so I'm creating this angle of the plane, right? Right here and here. These are parallel to one another. I'm judging the overall, we could say, depth of this plane. And I'm doing that just with my eye. So it's certainly narrower right, than it is deep. So it is much deeper um, than it is, we'll say, the height overall. So I'm going to create a parallel line to that one back here. Now notice that at any time I can move a line in or up or down or over. So that's why I'm leaving it in this sketch stage. I don't yet know if I'm going to need to push or pull a line one direction or another. I need to get a little bit more of the information in before I do that. So I know that I can keep this parallel line here. One, two, we're going to come over and put the exact same line. Right, it's parallel right there. Again, I'm sort of, with my mind's eye, I'm judging the overall distance, height and width once again. So at this point, I just need to take the angle from this point and drive it back. I'm going to take this angle and mimic it right up here. So you can take a pencil and actually check, or you can do it with your eye first and then check, am I right? You know, does that look good overall? And with this, we should have our first plane drawn in. Here is our second plane. At this time, all we need to worry about is the top. Well, all we need to do is copy this line, make that exact same angle right here. All right, so we'll do that. Now notice I started a little bit high and immediately corrected, and I feel as though this angle is the same. This to this to this. If you feel as though it's off, just check real quick. All this leaves now is our back edge. And all we're going to do is, it's the same line as this, which is the same line as that. And we're going to keep the exact same line right back here. Once again, we can very quickly double check. And I'm a little bit off. I need to shave one corner down just a little bit. So now we have our top plane. If you feel as though you need to make any minor adjustments, now's the time to sketch out like those minor adjustments. I'm going to thicken this up height-wise just a little bit by pushing my lines down. I feel as though they could be a little bit taller in proportion. If your lines are bothering you, you can very quickly just erase them out. All right. 
And we've developed the overall idea of the cube. So our second step is to break down the basics of this cube to make it simpler to draw. And if you'll notice, we have a line that is generated right through here. I'm going to use that side of that pencil. I'm still laying down my lines lightly in sketch form. I can slowly start to press a little bit harder where I feel confident that the drawing is in proportion and we can start adding these little details. For example, right down here we have the essence of a little bitty foot and it's essentially a dark square right there and you'll see a little bit of a corner on it right here. We have a small little window or opening right here. We will indicate that. We have this little opening here in our game cube, almost like a door. So this line here, we're going to mimic that and then we're going to draw a straight line. We're going to go parallel to that, so all of these lines match. Now if you'll notice, there's a side plane that we can see right here. To get that correct angle, which is this, all we're doing is copying this angle. This angle is the same angle as that, is the same angle as this. So that to that to that, all the same. And I can very quickly just hatch that in. I can start to lay down a more dominant line, particularly at the bottom as the weight is being pushed down. So we want the idea of weight to be at the bottom. We have some smaller details like another opening here. It's just a parallel line, very similar, and there's no opening. We have the indication of a handle right here, which is a slight arc. So you'll see that I'm going to generate that exact same angle here. All we need to do is erase out and give ourselves a little bit of room to just create the essence of this handle. I'll put a little bit of hatching in there. I'm going in this direction. And above that we start to have the idea of a grid mimic that line this angle is to that so we're repeating a lot of things in here now in order for me to get the idea or essence of this grid instead of drawing it all out the simplest thing I can do is just take this HB pencil and very quickly using eye hand control working with my pressure control just generate a very rapid tone in this direction then I can very quickly switch and I'm going to mimic the direction of this angle I'm not scribbling I'm trying to be in control and I'm trying to lay down that consistent mark both consistent in the angle and the overall pressure that I'm using to generate this tone Now that that's done, I can merely come in with a nylon eraser and simply start to erase out the idea of a grid. 
I'm trying to get the essence of the grid. We don't need to copy it exactly. We don't need to get the perfect amount of horizontal and vertical lines. We are just getting the essence that there's a grid here. Once I've done that, I can come in with a pencil and just merely indicate a line here and there within this grid and it will be enough for the viewer to understand that we have a grid that's here and it's a significant part of the cube on this plane. Okay, now that we've done that, I can go and I can start to work on this piece here. This piece is essentially just another rectangle on the side of the cube. I'm going to mimic this line. I'm going to mimic that line. If you have trouble, all we need to do is take our pencil and check. Is that the same? Looks good. Is this the same? Looks good. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of a curve, a little bit of an arch right here. So before I draw that other one, we need to connect. So I'm going to merely copy the angle of these lines right here. This, 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 this will be exactly the same. And if you make it that exact same angle, it will tell you the end of where this stops and it's right there. Once again, we will draw the idea of that same arch. All we do is copy it here, quickly erase out any construction lines that were needed. And once we've done that, we can take a look and assess. We essentially have two rectangles that need to go down here and a series of one, two, three, four circles in a row right here. So to set those up, what I'm going to do is draw a line right there. Same angle, same angle, same angle, same angle. I'll draw a secondary line. This keeps everything straight. At this point, all I need to do is to draw a vertical here and here. And we'll draw a vertical here and here. Then we connect with a heavier line. And simply race out the construction lines. What this does is it helps keep both of these rectangles, right, or slots, at the same angle, at the same line of sight. Right, I can give them a little bit of depth just by adding that. Now we have a series of four circles. So here is our halfway point. Right here is halfway. I can take a pencil and check that with a measurement. I could even draw an X across this if I wanted to, and that would give me the center. So right about in there. It's a good idea to note where your center is because two of the circles will be over here and two will be over here. So there's the center. Once again, just as I did here, I drew that diagonal. I'm going to draw a diagonal. It matches that, matches that. I will draw the top. This will help keep our circles in line. That circle is going to go here, and this one is going to go here. This one goes here, and this one goes here. By placing these out, I've already laid out a grid or a system for placement of these circles. And they will actually be ellipses since they are in perspective, but we can work on drawing those ellipses like so. And if you have to, you could even draw a box 
find your center line and your center for your vertical and horizontal and you could start to chop it out, to draw it out, to sketch it out this way. There's a slight depth to the edge and I'm going to indicate that just by putting essentially the idea of a half moon mark on the same side on every one. I'm just going to fill in the idea of a half a moon on that side. I can come in with that kneaded eraser and literally erase over everything right, to pull out those construction lines. Now all I need to do is just go in and just reestablish everything that we laid down initially, working on that pressure control and the idea of what line will be thick, thin, smooth, fat, angular, geometric, etc. And it looks like we have the indication here of some dots. All I need to do is to draw a straight line across. That will help me line up my dots. And then we can simply go in with an eraser and very quickly erase that out. Now let's take a look at the top. I'm going to just reestablish some of our original line work so that I don't lose it. It's going to be important to find the center of this because we have a large circle or ellipse on top of it. So very quickly what I can do is just eyeball where I think is the center or if you'd like to find it we can very quickly draw an X from one corner to the other. We'll go from this left corner to the right corner and draw straight across. And right there is our center. So all I need to do is mirror or mimic or copy this line and draw a parallel angle right there. Right, that's the center of our lid. And that's where the center of this circle or ellipse is going to live as well. So I'm actually going to draw a square on top of this square. Right? So all I'm going to do is copy this line. I'm going to copy that line over here. Same angle, same angle, same angle, same angle, same angle. Now let's switch. I'm going to copy this angle right here and I'll copy that same angle right here. So we start to essentially develop a square very close to the middle. 
Also note that right there where we found our center line is also about where that square's corner is. So we can use that to sort of straighten out our square if there's any problems with it. Right there's the corner and right there. So that looks pretty good. Right? I can draw a center line right through there. Again, I'm mimicking this angle to that angle. And we've given ourselves a unique little square that's in perspective. And we can start to literally draw in that interesting main circle in the center of the top of our game cube, our retro gaming system. right there and at this point we have used this box to get what we have needed and we can simply start to erase some of these construction lines so that they don't confuse us when we lay in the rest of the lid of the GameCube. So I can just tap that out and then we'll go in and very carefully start to reestablish what we had initially drawn in. You'll find that a lot of times you'll draw something and then you may erase part of it out and then redraw and erase more and redraw. So there's a lot of drawing and redrawing to get an overall idea of an object such as this GameCube. Now that I have this circle in here, we need to stop and take a look at the lid. It's essentially a border that goes around the perimeter. So I'm going to mirror this line. And this is a thick line because there is a width to the line. The same over here. Angle to this angle to that angle. And right about here, there's a unique divot. We'll just put that in by eye. This has a arch or a curvature to it. And we have simply another divot right there. And we have the indication of another ellipse and a secondary ellipse and we have a third one here so we will go in and cut into that line and literally carve out with our eraser where this third ellipse lives At this point, I'm going to go through and establish some of my darker lines that will hold weight. I can even come down and start to indicate the idea of a shadow or drop shadow. So I'll come in with a little angle right here. There's a little angle right here. And I can come in with a hatch mark like so. I keep that hatch the same direction and we'll drop a little bit of shadow under here. And I'll indicate a little bit of hatching. I'll come in at an angle and I'm going to hatch this entire plane
I'll come in and hatch a few areas that I find are darker, such as these holes. I'll throw a little bit of hatching in on the edge in both directions, horizontal and vertical. I'll throw some hatching on this corner, horizontal and vertical. And we'll throw some hatching as well on this piece to separate it. And I'm going to erase any stray mark right, that I have up here. And we still have a little bit of more work to do. So before I finish that work, let's switch gears a little bit and let's grab a piece of this vine charcoal. Even though we've laid down some hatching for tone, we're going to come in with a little bit more tone with our vine charcoal. Now our graphite is literally going to live within this and you'll still be able to see the graphite. I'm still going to take this edge and you'll see me use my finger to put a little bit of pressure on the edge, but my overall hand is choked back on the charcoal. And I'm using fairly light pressure. And I'm going to come through and just shade this one side of the cube and I'm going to try to get it consistent and I'm also going to shade just a little bit of the other side of the cube and you'll notice I'm going to go in this direction so for this side we mimicked or mirrored that overall angle and on this side I'm going to go lighter on my pressure but I'll go in this angle I'll very quickly come in with the finger and I'll go the opposite direction and with that as well. So I'm going to go both with it and opposite of it. And we're just laying down a very quick tone with that vine charcoal. If need be, you can come in a secondary time. If you come in a secondary time, I usually come in with the second layer the opposite direction as I'm doing here. Initially we laid in this way. On a second coat, go in this direction. And once again I will come in with a finger and we will blend and unify our shading. And I can come in with this eraser and very quickly just touch an area or two you don't have to go over every single area there's a light that comes down right in this corner catching a little bit of light through here a little bit of light right here And now we can start working on the top a little bit more. There is a darkness to this circle, so I'm going to reestablish the circle. And I'm just going to very quickly come across through here and if you'll notice I'm coming in at the same angle as this so I'm keeping that angle and if I go in the other direction I'm going to go with that angle so I'll come right over that with that angle and I'll lay down some hatching as well same we will go with that angle and then I'll and mimic that angle
and I can come in with an eraser if I want to and just hint at the idea of a little bit of text through here and I'm not even going to bother with making it you know perfect we just want an indication that there's some text now at this point I'll stop you know, I'm going to come in with a darker pencil and I'm just going to pull out any detail or reestablish any detail that I would like to. A lot of this detail can delineate as it pushes back in space. So I'm going to try to work on the detail that would be considered to be the front detail, meaning more on the front planes or we could say closer to you, the viewer. And at this point, I'm just merely going around and having a good time as a designer or an artist, just touching up a few things. And I think we have the overall sketch, right? the overall idea, the overall essence of this simple cube that's been taken and more simple cubes have been put on that. And we have some nice series of ellipses in it. down just a touch more hatching right through here. I'll take my kneaded eraser, I'll make sure it's cleaned out, and I'll very quickly pull off any tone or any loose marks around our drawing, like so. And then the only thing I'll left to do is just to touch up with an eraser here and there. So I'll just quickly indicate the idea of a back plane right here. And I think this shows a nice cube. It shows how you can take structure, build on it, and generate a decent product sketch. I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing your work. I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, 
I'm Jonathan Simon, and in this course, I'm going to teach you how to draw. Would you like to learn how to draw more effectively in order to produce beautiful and interesting drawings as well as functional and aesthetically pleasing designs? Maybe you are a graphic designer who wants to add the drawing process to your workflow. Whether you are working on logos, editorial layouts, or digital productions such as websites or app designs. Maybe you are not a designer but want to communicate more effectively in visual form. Drawing is a skill that can be used in many different careers and not just design. For example, the various types of composition included in this course, including the rule of thirds, formal and informal subdivision, focal point, rotational symmetry, and the many other types of composition can be applied in drawings, but also designs and even photography. Drawing as part of the design process is something taught at prominent art schools and it is used at various prestigious design agencies to this day. Drawing can be used as part of the brainstorming stage, the sketching stage, and even later parts of the design process. In this course, you will learn how to apply effective mark making techniques, gesture drawing, value with shading and lighting, effective methods for drawing various shapes and forms, structural drawing, product sketching, the fundamentals of drawing the head and the face, drawing in perspective, and much more. By the time you have completed this course, you will have produced various drawings and designs that you could add to your portfolio. When you improve your drawing skills, you open the door to many more design possibilities. Producing beautiful drawings and interesting designs can be fun, but it can also be financially rewarding when you use it during your career or as part of freelance design work. This course comes with over 10 hours of helpful video demonstrations, from structural drawings, to product sketches, to applying many different types of composition and drawing drawings and logo designs to many other types of drawings. The Drawing for Designers PDF book is also included with enrollment, which has 108 pages of content, including historical background and further explanation of some of the drawing methods, worksheet pages to print out or draw, support file photos, and additional exercises. You also get access to all the photo reference support files and access to our critique forum and community in the Drawing for Designers Facebook group after enrollment. Once you enroll, you have lifetime access so you can complete the course at your own pace as you improve your drawing and sketching skills. Please check out the other free sample videos on this course landing page for more information. I'm Jonathan, a professional artist and educator. I've been teaching students how to draw for many years now. As a university professor of drawing and painting, I've had a lifetime career in art, from graphic design to illustration to digital illustration. Before becoming a full-time artist, commercially my work and illustrations have been published on various magazine covers, advertisements, and commissioned for various companies. Some of my art has been featured in prominent galleries throughout the United States. In this course, my professional experience and education will provide you with expert guidance as you improve your drawing skills. My goal is to equip you with the skills and knowledge you need to produce amazing drawings. Jump on in the course and start drawing today. Get feedback from me and your peers as you build your skills and your portfolio. I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not satisfied, you can get a refund. But I know you'll love this course as you start to produce beautiful drawings. So don't wait. Join today, and I'll see you in this course.